Grade 12s, welcome to Learn Extra Live Maths. We are now live. I know that you have all been watching since grade 10 and 11, right? And now finally your time has arrived. Guys, if you don't know this by now, you need to chat to us on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. You can also chat to me, India, on Twitter at learn extra. Post your questions. Don't forget the only silly question is the one asked after the exam because then it's far too late. So now I've got Dina on with me today and I can see um, I'm peeking. We're going over financial maths. Um, our website, this is very important. Go to learnextra.co.za forward slash live. And what you can do there is you can get the show notes for this show. You can get last week's videos and you can get all of the schedules. So that is the link to know, guys. That is learnextra.co.za forward slash live. So now, earlier in the grade 12 show, we had um, a, gentleman named, a gentleman named Rob, who was from the World Education Games, and he gave us this. And it's all about um, uniting the world through learning. And you guys all know, through our Facebook page, we consider ourselves an online community of learners, helping each other out. So now, what you need to do now, this is happening from the 5th to the 7th of March, and it's worldwide, guys. And I think Dina and I were chatting now. Dina, your, your school has taken place in this before, right? Yes, we've taken part. Uh, it's happening next week, when, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because they start at midnight in kind of New Zealand time, and then they go all the way through all the days right until midnight of the last last country in the world. So you have a period of 48 hours to catch every country in the world. That's 48 hours. And yes, there are five sections that you compete in in the maths. Uh, you've got integers, you've got fractions, you've got bod mass, and you compete with three other people from around the world. And as you're competing, you're just answering on the computer. And as you're competing, you can see your score versus somebody else's score. And then it's very addictive because you want to beat the next person. So it's very, very oh. exciting. This will be our fourth year that we're doing this. So we are really, really excited. Oh, I know. This I'm, I'm very excited to hear about this. So guys, tell your teachers, tell your friends, and go to, it's www.worldeducationgames.com. If you didn't have your pens out fast enough, I will be posting this onto the Facebook page. So tell everyone, take place, well, take part in this. Apparently, I think last year, they said it was about 4 million um, mm. kids that took part, which is just incredible. It makes the world so much smaller. But now, financial maths. Grade 12s, it's very important. This is your year. 2013 is the year for you. So the earlier we start, the better you'll be. So I think that, Dina, let's not take any more time. I think, take it away. Thanks, Indy. And uh, yes, very nice to be with you again. Remember last week we were looking at annuities and we looked at the formula for a future annuity, whereas today we're going to look at the formula for a present um, day annuity. And we're going to have a look at a present value annuity. We're going to look at the difference. And um, one thing I didn't uh, cover with you last week was a sinking fund. What is a sinking fund um, that was left over? And so I'll do one section on that, then I'll go on to looking how, how we can pay back um, a, a house loan, and finally we'll look at uh, buying a car, because I'm sure grade 12s, a lot of you out there are just wanting to, to get that new car, and I'm not really a proponent of buying that new car from the garage. I think we need to look at second-hand options. They're a lot cheaper, because the value of a car does depreciate once it leaves um, that showroom floor. So for now, let us get back to a sinking fund and what it is. A sinking fund is actually a fund that is set up if you want to purchase uh, equipment or machinery in, let's say, two years' time or five years' time. So you can predict that the current machinery that you have will have to be replaced uh, within five, ten years, whatever period of time. So you want to be clever and you want to be financially astute and you want to be able to save up now so that when the time comes that you've got to replace it, you don't have to outlay a whole lot of money, but you've already got the money saved up for that exchange or that replacement value. So that's really what a sinking fund is. It's a future value annuity that you set up in order to be, p be able to pay uh, for that equipment when the time comes for the replacement value. And we're going to have a look at an example because there are three things that you need to consider. The current machinery that you have will obviously grow in value um, if it's bought new. The machinery that you have, um, that you're utilizing, is not going to appreciate. It's going to depreciate. So it's going to um, 
have a certain uh, value at the end of, of those five years. And what we'd like to know is if I have the old machinery, um, it's actually called um, that value at the end of that period. It's, it's called the scrap value. Um, so basically, it's not worth nothing. It's worth something, but it's depreciated to the scrap value. And so we'd want to know what is the replacement value take away that scrap value that we could then say, okay, now I need this much money that I need to raise through my annuity. So let's look at a practical example to go through um, the various values and, and really make it real. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, let's see. All right, so last week, to just recap, we looked at how long would it take to in invest, how long will it take 100 Rand invested at 5% compounded interest to grow to 1,000 Rand? We also looked at how much money do we need to save um, in order to have enough money to buy a car in two years' time. What we didn't look at is what is a sinking fund and how are home loan repayments calculated. So that's really what we're going to do today. A sinking fund. Okay, so. The definition of a sinking fund is an example of a future value annuity in which we invest cash so that we have a particular amount of money available when we need it. For example, managers in a business know that they will need to replace a certain piece of machinery in five years' time. So what do they do? Let's take an example. Machinery is purchased, for example, at a cost of 250,000 rand. So let's say they purchased it purchased it now, it is expected to rise in cost at 15% per annum compounded interest, but it also depreciates in value at a rate of 8% per annum compounded annually. A sinking fund is started to make provision for replacing the old machine. The sinking fund pays 16% per annum compounded monthly, and you make payments into this ordinary annuity for five years. So the first question is, what is the replacement cost of the new machine five years from now? Okay, so there was a lot of facts that we can take from the given. Okay, so we have that you have paid 250 Rand to start off with, and this is going to rise at 15% per annum. Um, and it's going to also depreciate at a rate of 8% compounded annually. So what we're saying is that the, if you want to pay for machinery in five years' time, it's going to be more expensive by that much. But the current machine you have utilizing, because with age it reduces in value, it's going to decrease by 8% compounded annually. Okay, so let's look at those aspects first, and then we'll come back to the sinking fund. What is the replacement cost? So the replacement cost would be if I was going to pay for this machinery um, five years from now, whereas the scrap value is the value that it went from the original value to the depreciated value. So it was 250. In five years, how much has it depreciated by? So that would be the scrap value. And the replacement would be, obviously, the cost of the new machine. So let's take on new page. And let's write down what those facts were. So we had a 250,000 Rand machine. And the replacement cost would be how much is this 250,000 going to grow to? So what is my final amount? If I have a 250 rand, 250,000, and I've got it over a five-year period, in my account, or actually just how much does it appreciate by. So let's just go back and find it. Here it is. That would be, it increases by 15% per annum compounded um, annually. So 
that would be at an I of 15% compounded per annum, compounded annually. So we can now f fill in that we're starting off with a 250 compounded over a period of five years. Let's see how much this machine would now be worth. Using our calculator, let's bring it across. So we have 250,000. I think that's one too many. And we're multiplying that by 1.15 to the power of 5. And we get that it will now be 502,839. So it's just doubled over that time, 502. So that is, I'm just going to write that it will be about 502. Oh, let's round it off to the nearest thousand. So 503,000 rand. Okay. So currently we've got, we bought a machine for a quarter of a million rand. And in five years' time, this machine is not going to be 250,000 rand if I was buying it new. It's actually going to be a lot more expensive. And we've just worked out that at that rate of 15% per annum, it would actually be now worth double its value. So that's all we've done, the replacement cost. If five years from now, if in 2018 I was going to buy that machine, it would now cost me half a million rand. Okay, so that's what we've established. Now, if we've bought that machine for 250,000 rand, the one I'm using is depreciating in value. And so it will now be worth very little. Let's see how little it will be worth. So my new machine, or the machine I've got now, will have a scrap value. It depreciates at the rate of 8%. So we've now got that... I've got a depreciation of 1 plus 8% over five years. So if I go back to my calculator, I want to do the same calculation, but my percentage is now 0 0.8. So I get that my machine Okay, let's just um, correct this because this doesn't make sense. This would actually be a depreciation. So that's got to be negative. Okay, so let's go back here because the machine couldn't be worth more. So that would actually, let's go back into the percentage. And we have a 0 0.92. So that gives us, right, the machine is now only worth 165,000. Okay, so taking the wear and tear of the machine, I can still sell my machine for 165,000. Okay, that's its value. Okay, can you see what's happening now? That's how much I'll be able to sell my machine for because its scrap value is valued at 165, but I need a new one at 503. So what is the difference between these two amounts? We've got uh, 503 minus 165. That's how much money I'll need in five years' time. So that would be minus... 503000, and we actually get about 340,000. Okay, so it's approximately 340,000. Okay, so now that becomes my future value. I want to get 340,000. I want to have that cash on hand so that I'm not going to have to borrow money in five years' time. And that sinking fund is what we call the 340,000. It's the annuity that you set up for the replacement value minus the scrap value. I hope that makes sense. And so our annuity from last week, if you remember the future value annuity, a sinking fund is just a future value. So we'd like to know how much money must we pay per month so that we get a one plus i to the n minus one over i 
So we want to have 340,000 at the end of our five years. We want to know how much money must we pay per month. And we have an I value. Let's go and check what the rate is that they are charging us on that annuity. Um, it says 16% per annum compounded monthly. So we've got that as a rate. 16% per annum compounded monthly. So we need a per month. So I would be 16 over 1200 zero, zero per month compounded monthly. So we can now go and put that in here. That's 16 over 1200. And we want that over five years. So we want it over 60 months minus one over I. And so if we take our calculator, let's just clear that. And we've got our 340,000 340, that we're going to be multiplying by I. So multiplied by 16 divided by 1200. Zero, zero. And we're going to divide that by our 1. Let's just go 1 plus our value of 16 over 1200. Zero, zero. And that is all to the power of 60. And we then are going to minus 1 from that and we get equals. So we need to pay 3,735 rand, 3,000, 3, approximately that much. Let's just go back there, what was it? 37, yeah, 3735. Okay, so if every month you put away 3,700, in five years time, you'll have enough money for that new machine. Okay, time for a break. I think so. Guys, you've <laughs> been so fantastic on the Facebook page. Dina, you have no idea these mathematicians are out in full force today. Grade 12s, please post your questions on our page. It's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And I see a whole bunch of you are helping each other out. That's exactly what we want, guys. This Facebook page is not just for us. It is also part of a bigger community. This Facebook page is for all of us, it is ours, it is team mindset. So on that note, get posting and we'll see you now after the break. Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live Maths Grade 12s. I hope that you are all following. If you're not, post your questions on the page, facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Chat to me on Twitter at learn extra. Before I ask Dina some questions, I was going to tell you what this is all about. If you didn't know, we are giving away this awesome prize for your random act of kindness. What you need to do is you need to post your random act of kindness on our events page. What you need to do is you find it and it says pay it forward. I will post the link on our Facebook page again and what you could win is this awesome hamper from Simba, which is a huge packet of Cheetos, a Mindset Tea, um, a Cheetos notebook, five CDs, guys, five CDs, not just one, but five, um, Mindset lanyards, and a whole bunch of awesome stuff right here for you. So all you have to do is post those onto our events page. And don't forget that it's not about spending money. It's about doing those small little things, paying it forward. Uh, tell, tell somebody that they look nice today or um, help, help a lady, an old lady cross the road or help your mom unpack the groceries. Small things really do go a long way. Okay, Dina, I think we're going to get straight back to you. I've got one or two questions. Okay, um, let me try and see okay, if let's I can see. help. Let's see. Okay, so now um, some of them are really small. So one, this one's from Mahorsi and he says, um, um, do we round off only in our final answer? Yes, um, rounding off is 
a key thing when, when doing mathematics exams. But in life, if I was talking about machinery and it's a quarter of a million rand, uh, we would talk in closest to the nearest rand, really. And so you've seen that the calculations I did, because those values on the calculator, they've got six different digits. I'm just running it off um, so we can get a, a fair gauge as to what's happening. But the, the nitty gritty, that, that little detail that you need for an examination is not what I'm concentrating with at the moment. But you're quite right. If uh, the question had subsections, um, then those subsections would be required to be rounded off because they would be final answers to the subsections. However, the values that you were using would have to be unrounded off uh, values if you were using a sinking fund, for example. So the replacement value, the scrap value, uh, would need to be unrounded. Otherwise, your final value would, could be quite, uh, quite different. Uh, if you were rounding off to the nearest 10 rand or to the nearest 100 rand, you can imagine that there's going to be a difference in that final value. So context in mathematics always decides for us what to do with the rounding off. And uh, for me, there's always two different ways of doing maths. One is um, for an examination, which the examiner specifically asks you to round off to two decimal places, that's usually the, the common way of running off, um, or the other one, which is context-driven. I just want to get a feel for what kind of numbers we're working with. And you saw with the sinking value, we started with a quarter of a million rand. We then have a half a million rand, but remember that value was 503,000 rand. Well, what's 3,000 rand in relation to half a million rand? So you'll see context tells us how to speak, how we talk about it, and which is a very different concept to when you actually answer questions in the mathematics exam. So you're quite right, we round off in the final answer, um, but if you do have subsections, you also round off there, uh, but you would still utilize the unrounded off value to work with your next subsection. Okay, one more question, and then I think we're gonna get straight back to it. So now this one is from Z Erasmus, and they ask, when we talk about depreciation, are we always, are we always forced to use a compound formula but change the positive sign to negative? Does that make sense? Um, yes, with the depreciation, um, we depreciate by um, changing the sign in the formula to the negative. That's quite correct. But if it's compound uh, interest, you would use the A equals P into 1 um, minus I to the power of N. But if it was a depreciation of simple interest, you would just have 1 minus in. So whichever type of interest you're dealing with, you would always have a negative. That's correct. Okay. Awesome. All right, let's get back to the financial maths. And the very, very new thing, grade 12s that you're doing, is working with, uh, with loans and how to repay loans. And we deal um, only with the aspect of a loan that is being repaid in the same way as last week we talked about the uh, annuity as being a regular payment that you are making. So it's we are not going to look at loans where, where rates change and values that you're putting into the loan change and that kind of thing. We, we're keeping it regular because the formula deals with regular payments. So to take a very, very basic example, if let's say um, you're in grade 12 now, you want to go and study at university and maybe in six years' time, you would like to buy a house for a million rand, let's say. Then we would like to know how... Uh, much you would uh, be paying every month in order to be able to repay your home loan that you've been given. So a home loan is basically money that's been kind of paid for you ahead of time and the bank or the institution says to you, you are allowed to get a million rand, but you've got to pay us back. So your regular monthly paying that you are uh, paying back is obviously called the repayment. That's the repayment that you're making. Um, and at the end of your whatever period you have paid that loan for, uh, you're paying back that loan for, um, you will see that the formula takes into consideration how to work out the interest that you have to pay back at the same time. Now remember last week when I did present values, I spoke about this formula that comes from uh, sequences and series, and it's actually the sum of a geometric series. I'm not going to derive the formula. It would take far too long, and I think I would lose a quite a lot of you in the process. So I'm not going to derive it, but you can certainly ask your teacher to derive it with you once you've done the geometric series. So it's exactly the same thing with the present value. Here is a formula I'm giving you. It's coming from a sequence of numbers, uh, applying a um, a sum formula to the sequence, and then this formula appears. And it's called the present value formula because 
presently, if you are wanting a loan, the money is paid to you up front. So it's a present value that is tending towards zero. So at the, in the future value, you want to have naught balance. Different to if you have a, pr uh, a future value annuity. You're starting with no money, and at the end of the future, you're going to have a lot of money. We're doing the complete reverse. We're saying we're paying you up front, you're getting this money up front, but then you need to be paying us back so that the amount turns to zero. So that's called our loan repayments. And that process that goes from, let's say, a million rand that you want to loan to having it zero, that process is what we call amortize. So you amortize a, a debt. Uh, the debt becomes zero. Okay, right, so I think the best is to really work with this million rand. Um, you can imagine those homes that you've seen out there that are 5 million, 25 million, however much million, and how much it would take you to pay back that, um, that house. We're now going to calculate just on that particular house how much money we would need to be paying per month, obviously at a certain rate. We've made up a rate here, um, and at a certain compound rate, we're going to see how, how much per month we would have to um, uh, pay for this or repay for this, this loan, but um, I also want to mention that um, those repayments are going to be made not at the beginning of a period like we did with our, present, uh, with our future values, but they're going to be done um, at the beginning of the next month. So if, let's say today, you decide that you are going to be purchasing that house, your uh, payment is only going to be made from the future, the, the next month on. So you must remember that the formula takes that into account. Okay, so I think I've spoken about the formula. I've spoken about what a loan repayment is. Uh, um, a present value is very much a regular payment. I'm going to be paying 2,000 rand every month in order to uh, make sure that my loan is paid back. And if at any stage you need to do something different, then our formula is not going to work. So we would need to reorganize um, our formula at that stage. All right, so loan repayments. Often when we take a loan, we have to pay back a certain amount each month until the loan is paid off. The amount we pay back each month is also called an annuity. It's called a present value annuity. When the principal and the interest are paid by means of annuity, we say that the debt is amortized. And here's the formula that I spoke to you about. P for present value is equal to the amount X that I have to pay regularly into the loan, 1 minus 1 plus I, the effective rate, to the power of negative N over I. So we're going to keep that in mind because it is slightly different than the future value. Right, and let's see our example. To me plans to buy a 1 million rand house on a 20-year mortgage. And that's the other language that we use. So we've used two, two words. Loan repayment is how much you're paying every month. And uh, amortize is when you take the present value from what it is to a zero debt. So the debt goes. A mortgage is uh, the length of time over which you are wanting to pay that house. So most bonds are either a 20-year bond or a 25-year bond, or 30 years. So your institution, you will negotiate with them whether you want to be paying back for 20 years, for 25 years, or whether you want to pay back for 30 years. So let's say Tumi does it over a 20-year period, the sooner the better, of course, and a bank is offering a mortgage bond at 16,25% per annum, compounded monthly. Calculate the monthly repayments that Tumi will have to make in order to amortize the loan. So here we have, um, and I think we'll look at different uh, paying back uh, periods. So we've got a 20 year. Okay, so let's just highlight the important concepts. We've got a million rand. Okay, and if I just look at the difference between a loan and that sinking fund. If I know that in 10 years time, I want to pay for that house, I could start saving now to have something towards that house, then I wouldn't have to loan the one million. So you've got to be quite um, intelligent about the way that you go about things so that at the end of the day, you're not losing uh, money in the process. But here's her million rand, and the period that she wants to pay it for is 20 years. So 20 years means N is 240 months. Because remember, the formula works on N as your number of months. And a bank is offering 
the rate of 16. So our rate is 16,25% per annum compounded monthly. Remember, to be an effective rate, you need to have your per rate the same. So I need to have my A and my M the same. Otherwise, I don't have an effective rate. So I've got 16,25 over 1,200 as my per month compounded monthly rate. So that is my rate per month. So I've worked with my rate, calculate the monthly repayment. So we've really got a present value because we're saying that I want to find out how much I must pay per month if I have 240 payments to make and my rate, I've already worked out what it is. So that's PV, okay, let's fill in our values. So we have a million rand is uh, the, the amount of our loan, so P is what the institution gives you. So it's a million rand that they give you. We're going to find out how much money must we pay per month with a rate of 1 plus 16,25 over 1,200 to the power of negative 240 over our I value, which is 16,25 over 1,200. Okay, so I think we're ready for our friend, the calculator. And we're going to have our million multiplied by that and divided by that. So our million, two, three, one, two, three. So that's our million. And we're going to multiply by our 16.25 over 1,200. And once we've done that multiplication, we're going to divide by this big bracket, which is 1 minus, and then there's another bracket of 1 plus a fraction of 16.25 over 1200. Zero, zero. You'll have noticed that I haven't done any of the roundings off because I, won't, I don't want to lose my decibels, otherwise I can be quite out. And that's the power of negative 240. And we're going to close that bracket. So, no, we don't want that one, we want this one. And let's see what it gives us. There we go. There's the magic number, 14,100. So if you want to do this payment over a 240 months, we need 14,100 rand in order to be able to pay back that loan. And remember, that is the amount of money that you're paying per month, which is inclusive of the interest. It's taken, that formula takes in the account, takes into account the... Um, the interest rate that you have to pay. Okay, so interest rate is quite high, 16.25, it's, it's quite high, hence it gives us um, an, a monthly payment of 14,100 rand. Wow, you might be saying to yourself, you've worked that out, and you may be saying to yourself, uh-uh, I can't afford that, so please can I get the loan repaid over 30 years? Okay, so what would change over 30 years? Over 30 years, okay, we want to have it over a period of 30 years, which is 360 months. Okay, so now I have same formula. I want to pay back my loan but let's already fill in those values. Let's fill that in. So we have one million, and we've got the same rate, one minus one plus our 16,25 over 
360 months. So we've now got that. And the beauty about our calculator is I haven't gotten rid of the previous calculation. So we all we're going to do is we're going to change our exponent. Let's just get to our exponent because the rate stays the same. But we want to see changing the by 10 years. Let's see how it helps us in our repayments. So we're going to just delete that and we're going to get a minus and a 360. Okay, let's see what our repayments are. Well, comes down by a little, 13,649, so it doesn't come, it doesn't change by much. Um, so X is about 13,000, what did we say it was? 649. Okay, so, oopsie, there we go, 649. So, comes out by a little bit. The interest rate is so high that that 10-year period doesn't actually uh, impact on, on that repayment so much. Indeed. Okay, let's take a short little break. Mindset is great, Tolves. You know what I love about you guys is that you help each other out on the page. I can't, Dina, tell you enough of the people that are actually the mindsetters. Mondly, thank you for helping out. Clarence, thank you for helping out. Kule, thank you for helping out. Let's have a look. I think Otsile, thank you. Um, Sa Samua, I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly, but guys, this page is for you. This community is for you. So if you see something on the page that you understand, please post the answer because sometimes you learn a lot by teaching others. Hmm, maybe that's your way of passing it forward today. What do you guys think? See you now after the break. Hi guys and welcome back. We are entering our last literally, I think it is something like 15 minutes or 18 minutes of the show. Please make sure you post your questions on the page. I am loving how you are all helping each other out. Guys, this is how you learn. You learn by helping each other out. Whether it's, you know, real study groups or online study groups, it also works the same. Um, I think, also, I don't know if you missed this earlier, this, which is awesome, World Education Game. Somebody asked on the page for the link again. It is www.worldeducationgames.com. And the most amazing thing is, which I didn't realize earlier, and I was talking to Dina about it, um, that the host city this year is in Sydney, in Australia. So I think that that's really fun. And so tell your teachers, tell your friends to take place, well, to take part, and I will be posting this on the Facebook page. And I think without further ado, Dina, let's, let's get this done. The last, what, 15 minutes of the show left. That's great. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, just World Games. I'm passionate about the World Games. In 2010, Johannesburg was the host city, and um, one of the programs was done from my school as being part of the host city, so I know oh. about all uh, that That's hosting. That's amazing, Dina. Yes, yes. You're lucky. That's it. That's sure. It. Um, but for those of you who don't understand, because you might be thinking, well, how do these games work? They are literally questions that pop up onto your screen, so you'll see three times six, and you've got to write that answer. You've got to type that answer onto the computer. It's 18, and the next question pops up. Um, so if you made a mistake with that one, you'll get a little cross, and there'll be a little bar that shows you how how many are you getting right? So, for example, there was a child from Indonesia who was competing with one of my children, and they could get almost like 60 of those questions done in a minute because you've got <gasps> rounds of a minute. So after a minute, they cut you off and you go on to the next game. And you get to play against three other people from around the world at the same time. So you may be playing somebody from Colombia, somebody from the Philippines. So it's very, very exciting. So you need to register. You need to go on to that website, uh, which was? It is www www.worldeducationgames.com but I will post it on the page now guys and be sure to go there I think it says the countdown I think it's 6 days 6 days, 17 hours, 14 minutes and 45 seconds to go to get, to get type in. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so, yes, you, you need to play a round of this. It's the most amazing, phenomenal, exciting mathematics game ever that you will ever play in your life. So get registered. Right. Um, back to the loans. And we've just done a, a home loan. Uh, and how much it would cost to repay a million rand. So then you'd be able to work out, you know what, you can't really buy that million rand, you need to buy a 500,000 rand home because you won't be able to afford the repayments. But that formula 
is going to be able to help you make those decisions. So you're not just going in and trying to do something that you can't afford. Next thing on the program would be, what about a car? So what I've done is I've taken an example from the Gauteng, uh, the Department of Education, in fact, it was a national paper, it wasn't a Gauteng paper. And so this question has been adapted from the grade 12 Department of Education exam, November 2009. And the reason I've said I've adapted it is because I've taken each of the questions so we can look at them individually and try and extract what is important or what are the important concepts that we need to extract from each of those questions. So let's have a look at what it says. A car that costs 130,000 Rand is advertised in the following way. No deposit is necessary, and the first payment is due three months after the date of purchase. And just to remind you that your present value formula works that you are repaying the loan one month after the purchase. Okay, so very important to remember that. You don't, you don't buy and you start repaying straight away. You pay one month after the purchase. Okay, so here, the... the they don't require a deposit, which is very strange. Most times you do require to pay a deposit, but anyway, this is how it's advertised. And the first payment is due three months after the date of purchase. The interest rate is quoted at 18% per annum compounded monthly. Okay, so if you remember when I was talking about the sinking fund, um, a car will have a scrap value. If you purchase it new today, in a month's time, it will have a scrap value. And that scrap value um, has well, uh, people say that um, it will be about 10% less than, than what you've paid for it. So that's why early in the program I said try and see if you can get a second-hand car because um, new cars uh, are extremely expensive and you need to try and, and have some kind of a full affordability plan in your lives as well. Okay, so first question is to calculate the amount owing two months after the purchase date. So why does this question come into, into being? Because... If um, we are only going to be paying three months after the date of purchase, that kind of advertising could be quite deceptive. You, you may think, oh, that's very nice. Car costs 130000 And you know what? I only have to pay in three months' time. Um, so that's great. What happens to the two months in between? I purchase, I wait, and I start paying my loan. What happens to the value of that car, the 130000 Nothing. Nothing in finance ever is stationary. It's always, there's always a dynamic aspect to it. And that 130,000 Rand is actually going to grow in value to a new amount because you haven't started paying that loan yet. So it doesn't stay there waiting for you to start repaying it. You actually are going to owe interest on that money while it's waiting. Okay, very sneaky. The advert doesn't say that. You need to read that advert and you need to understand um, exactly how it's interpreting the maths. And for those that are not mathematically literate, you are just going to bypass that completely. So that's why the first question is to say, calculate how much you owe two months after the purchase date. So do you still owe 130000 or do you owe more? You are going to owe more because you are going to owe interest because that car has been waiting for you. Okay, so... Um, we've got here that the quoted rate is 18% per annum co compounded monthly. So this would mean that our I would be 18% per annum compounded monthly, which would give us a rate of 18 over 1200 zero, zero, per month compounded monthly because we want to know how much do we owe two months after so we're working in months we're not working in years so the amount that we owe later is going to be 130,000 and it's going to appreciate by a rate of 18 over 1200 zero, zero. and how many months two months later at that rate. So how much is the car worth now? Because that's the amount that I have to loan because I've been waiting for two months. I now have, let's get our friend the calculator. Uh, right, so let's just, okay, let's get rid of that. Uh, let's just get rid of that. Right, so it's 130,000 
that I'm going to have waiting for two months. And so we have an 18 over a 1200 zero zero that we are growing over two months. Oops, no, not that two. This two. There we go. And that's equal to that, which is it's now worth 133,929. So your car originally was 130,000 is now going to be paid off with an extra 3,000 Rand because you've waited two months. So the advert is suggesting that you should wait to pay for three months. Nothing's happening. What it didn't tell you is that that money doesn't sit doing nothing. That 130 it actually grows interest. And so very deceptive advertising. So you need to read those adverts carefully. So it was 133. Let's just see that. I can never remember these figures. 133929. Okay. 133... 929. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's see what the next question is. Okay, so same question. Okay, now it talks us about a specific case. John bought this car on the 1st of March 2009 and made his first payment on the 1st of June. Now remember, if you're paying on the 1st of March, your formula only accounts for one month later for the April month, but he's doing three months later, which means that it's waiting for two months. It's waiting for the loan to start being repaid. So thereafter, okay, so he paid his first payment on the 1st of June, and thereafter he made another 53 equal payments on the first day of each month. Calculate his monthly repayment. Okay, so let's take John's case. Um, and we're going to extend our page, and we're going to go to one. We're going to say, right, his monthly repayment is that the car um, that was worth 130, the loan that he's going to be repaying is actually 133,929. Remember, we worked that out? Okay, so that's our loan. We want to know how much he must repay so that he's doing this over how many payments? They told us. Uh, 1 minus 1 plus, we've got a rate of 18, 1, 2, 0, 0. Okay, he made 53 equal payments, that's what the question said, but he made his first payment on the 1st of uh, June. So he's making 54 payments in total over 1 plus, no, over I, I'm not sure where I'm getting this 1 plus from, shouldn't be there. So we've got an I of 18 over 1200. Zero, zero. Okay, so now we can work with our calculator to find out the repayments. Okay, so we want the 133929. So here's the 929. So we actually want that payment. And we want to multiply that by our interest rate, which is 18 divided by 1200. Zero, zero. And we also want to divide that by our 1 minus bracket 1 plus fraction of 18 over 1, 2, 0, 0. And we've got this lovely to the power of negative 54. Let's see how much does John need to pay per month. Okay, that's how much John needs to pay per month. 363636. Three, six, three, six. Well, what an amazing number. Okay, that one I'll remember. So he will need to pay 3,636 and 36 cents per month in order to repay his loan of 133929. But it also says calculate the total of all John's payments. Now he's made 54 payments. So. Um, in total, we have 54 payments. So if we just take our calculator and multiply by 54, then we get that he's actually paid 196,363. Can you see why it's so useful to have a sinking fund? He's actually paying almost 60,000 Rand extra for this brand new car. That's what paying a loan is all about. It's expensive to pay a loan back. You're always going to be paying so much more for this thing. 
So it's good to, to try and save up and not to have to have loans. Right, 196363. One, so it's actually equal to 196363. Okay, that was a total of his, his amount. All right, now let's go back and see where we're at. Okay, okay so remember what John did. He, he paid, but he went according to the advert, which said he only needed to pay on the 1st of June. So it was waiting two months. And so that waiting period um, made him pay, made him have a loan of, of an extra 3,000 rand. Paul, on the other hand, says, you know what, I want to buy that car as well. And he also takes out a loan for 130,000 rand at the same interest rate. He also makes 54 equal payments. But look at the difference. He starts paying one month after the purchase of the car, which works in line with our PV formula. It takes into account that we pay one month after. So let's calculate how much Paul is repaying. Okay, so his loan, Paul, he's going to start paying straight away. So his 130,000 doesn't appreciate to anything, doesn't grow with any interest. It's now equal to X, same rate, so it's one minus. 1 plus 18 over 1, 2, 0, 0 to the power of negative 54. He also makes 54 payments. And that's all over 18 over 1, 2, 0, 0. Let's see how different this is from John's. And, oh dear, we've lost our formula there, so let's just clear that. So we've got 130,000. And we're multiplying that by 18 divided by 1, 2, 0, 0. And we're dividing that by the bracket. And the bracket is 1 minus, and we've got the 1 plus our fraction, doop, doop, 1, 2, 0, 0, and that is all to the power of, let's just delete that, it's all to the power of negative uh, 54 equals. Okay, he's got to pay 3, 5, 2, 9. Um, Okay, and let's see what the total is. He also pays, makes 54 payments. So he pays in total 190,000. Okay, 602. So he pays 190,000, 602. Remember, John paid 196. So this is Paul. This is John, 196, uh, 636. And we can see that by paying, two months earlier or starting to pay that loan straight away, we've saved 6,000 Rand on, on that. But it's still a whole lot of money from 130,000, still 60,000. So think about, be wise and think about if you want to take out that loan or not. Work with your formula and see how much it's going to cost you. Is that the end of the show? Oh, I can't believe it. Thank you so much, Mindsetters, for tuning in to Learn Extra Live. It has been such an amazing show. Grade 12, you have really made me so, so proud, this show. You have really helped each other out on the page so much. Um, and keep on doing that. If you see a question on the page that you understand, please help each other out. Thank you so much, Mindsetters, for such an awesome show. It has been absolutely amazing. Matrix, see you same time, same place next week on Learn Extra Live. Bye.